is up, fight fans? I am Jason Burgles for SureDog.com, and tonight's guest is competing at the UFC's latest visit to North Carolina for UFC on ESPN, ESPN Plus 24 on January 25th. On that night, he will face another highly touted rising prospect in Brazilian Felipe Colares, and that man is Montel Quick Jackson. Montel, what is up, and thanks for giving me some time tonight. Thank you guys for having me, man. How you guys are doing? I'm good. I'm good. Now, now I, I have, of course, I want to talk about your career. You know, this fight coming up, a whole lot of things. But I first have to talk about a shocking development from your recent interview with Mike Heck that hurt my heart. You told Mike you are not an interview guy. I am now crestfallen as I try to interview you tonight, knowing that you're not big into interviews. So please tell me, what is it about interviews you're not a big fan of doing? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't, like, me per se, man, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pretty much like a private person. Hmm. So like, uh, I, I, and then I, I don't believe in like selling myself to people, mm, you know? Okay. Either you like me, or you don't like me. It's, it's like, like I got no intention of making someone like me that don't like me. Like I can care less. Like you know, and and then too, like you know, I, I, I like I figure I, I can find something better to do than you know, playing around talking to people and giving people clickbait, man. <laughs> do you feel you're not an interesting enough person? I mean, I'm sure you're an interesting person. You have UFC fight. You've got a lot of good stuff to talk about. I do, but it, it, it's just some some things are best left unsaid, you know? <laughs> well, fair enough. Now, what is your experience like then for fight weeks and media days, at least for something like this? You know, it's kind of a control situation where you are, you know, at, at, at your home or the gym or wherever you want to be. You know, it's it's personal, but impersonal. Wait, hold up. Okay. Uh, it's personal, but impersonal, you know, through Skype. For media days, it could be like an onslaught of interviews, one after the other, and it will only get more so as you continue to have success. Are you also not too big on media days? Are you a media day guy too, or do you kind of have fun with the media days? No. <laughs> uh-uh. Oh, uh, man, uh, I, I try to do is, is like, I only try to do whatever is required, man. Nothing more, nothing less, man. You know, I, I'd rather just spend that time, you know, focusing and, you know, preparing, you know. Yeah, I, I was, and I was talking to Sadiq Yusuf a few, you know, last week, and he was talking about there's some parts of the sport, you know, when, like, you know, when he was coming up, growing up, and envisioning his future being in the UFC, being a fighter, and he envisioned those kind of things, too, you know, being mobbed by people in the lobby, in the hotel, and, and you know, these kind of situations, you know, the fame that comes with growing as a UFC fighter, but for you, it's a very different thing, like, w was that, when you signed with the UFC and everything like that, was that a, a fear or a concern you had in you that, you know, now you're going to become much more famous and now you have to confront these things is that one of the ease uneasy things about fame and success for you it is man but with, with all things you know you know i take it as it comes but to be honest with you man i i like to I like to be like a regular guy man treat me like a regular guy i just want to just walk down the street you know enjoy myself whether someone comes up and asks for a picture or whatever you know i'd be more happy to, to give it to them but you know I just, you know, I just don't really too much, like, look forward to that part of fame and success. I'd rather, like, you know, be able to do regular things like I do, you know, without, you know, without having to do them, them type of things and, you know, always interact with people and always put on that show and have that smiley face and everything like that. Because at that point, you know, when you become a celebrity, man, <laughs> fans are, are they, they expect you to always be happy, yeah. to never be sad, yeah. to, to always be in a good mood. To always want to take a picture, to always want to interact. So, like, I, I don't, I don't look forward to that, man. You know. You made it into the UFC after just six fights, which is pretty uncommon, especially at the lower weight classes. I saw in an interview you talked about the realizations you had after the the, the Simone fight. I mean, say the Ricky Simone debut loss. In terms of learning what you need to do to win at this level, you bounced back from that loss with two big wins since then against two super solid and tough veterans and Brian Kelleher and, and Andre Supentoff. Talk to me about the, the continued development and learning curve as you now enter Fight 4 in the UFC. And, and just only your 10th overall as a professional, what adjustments have you made in that time, you know, in the UFC, even before that, and continue to tweak as you go along on this, you know, professional MMA journey? If you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. Mm. You, you Always learning, always developing. 
literally staying in the gym, always trying to fill those holes and figure out, you know, what's next, what more can I do, how can I improve my game more, but not not falling into that that trap of uh, believing your own hype mm. and believing what people tell you, tell you because you know ultimately it's always it's, it's a guy out there trying to beat you, so you you gotta be always improving and you always gotta be you always gotta have that mindset of I'm trying to beat myself. I'm trying to beat the old Monto. Like, like I, I got to have that type of mindset. You hear, you see a lot of veteran fighters will say as they go along and they've been in a lot of fights, like, you know, you have to listen to your body and, and maybe not overtrain or do certain things or your nutrition or all these kinds of things. You know, since you're still so early in your career, are you, you know, do you subscribe to that kind of idea and listen to your body, maybe take a rest day when you need it or... For you, still early in this career, in this journey, you, you know, you it's about getting as much practice and much, you know, minutes in the cage as possible for you to learn and continue to grow and continue to round out your skills. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's different, man. Everybody's yeah. body doesn't react or, you know, perform the same. But, you know, of course you want to listen to your body and listen to your health and you want to always perform and train at your optimal. But, you know, there, there, there are the days that, you know, that, I don't feel like coming to the gym, but I know I got to go to the gym. I got to, you know, and I, and I, I, I realize that it's more mental than physical, you know, when, even, even when you feel like you can't, like, I know I can, mm-hmm. you know, when now, now I want to get this correct because it's listed in two different training places that you train and two different sites, you know, sir, dog, topology, but you train at Pure Vita MMA, right? Yeah, I train at Pure Vita MMA. Now, talk to me about your experience with Pure Vita because I just talked to a teammate of yours at O'Day Osborne last week. You know, he left the major gym at Rufus Sport to go there. He loves going, you know, being there from a from a going from a rigid kind of regimented style that you get seem to get at Rufus Sport to now he's at a place where he feels he can really shine being himself and and coaches that push to let guys develop their own unique fight style. Are you in the same kind of belief? Like being at Pure Vita, you can kind of just be yourself and you develop it on stuff. Do you enjoy, you know, training with the guys there? Yeah, man. It's, it's all about the, like the culture and the atmosphere. You gotta put, you gotta place yourself in uh in an environment in which you can grow. Because if you're not, you're just gonna it's just gonna be a detriment to your career to your career and to like, you know, get your your mental fortitude. So of course, you know, like you, you gotta go where you feel the love. You gotta go where people wanna see you win. Whether they with you or without you, they wanna see you win. Like you gotta go where you're gonna have your toughest challenges and your toughest critics. Mm. Only for your benefit, you know. So yeah, hell yeah. Every like, you know, everybody's experience is gonna be different, man. Like, I I, I can't say whether it's here nor there, but you know, the the, the whole reason why I I had left the, my original gym in which I began training with at Reds is only only because that you know, they they couldn't they they couldn't provide me with which what I needed to go to that next level. Now your win over Brian Kelleher is worthwhile, but was your but was your win over Sukmantoth, you know, sort of like a, a watershed moment in what is still a very young career for you? You know, it was it it was your second win at the UFC level. You know, Sukmantoth is, is record isn't impressive on the surface, but that man is all kinds of tough. You know, he's he's only had eight losses in his career, and they're all decisions. Does getting a, a second straight win, outlasting a su- super tough guy like him, give you further validation that you really are a world-class fighter fighting on a world-class level? Man, that that, that stuff, that, I don't even pay attention to that stuff, man. <laughs> anybody anybody that, that think otherwise, they know where to find me. Mm. You see Bantamweight, you know, come see me at 135. If, if, if you felt like, you know, you, you got what it takes or you you got what, you know what I'm saying, you got what it takes to take my spot, come take it, you know. Other than that, you know, I could care less, man. I can care less about what anybody got to say or any validation or any respect, Sean. Like, I can care less. That shit don't make or break me. I'm still Montel with or without it. Now, you- don't give it. You and your 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 opponent Felipe Calares coming up on the twenty fifth are in a similar position in your careers. He has only you know one more pro fight than you. He also lost his debut in the UFC, but you know as one since when the fight was offered, was he a guy you you had been familiar with and knew a little bit about, or, or you know, or was it like you you and your management kind of had to research him a little bit, or was it like that's who I'm fighting? Boom, fight! I don't care. 
No, it just, it just, you know, like, like any anything that isn't on paper, it's hypothetical. Mm. I don't give a fuck about that. Yeah. When they send the contract with the motherfucker, that's when it's real. <laughs> Everything else, I don't get. I don't care about. Mm. Don't make me a difference. I, I know it's real when the contract says something. Like I don't even pay attention to it. They don't even tell me because I I, don't, I can care less. Man. It, First thing I'm gonna say is, where's the paperwork? <laughs> is there is there anything about the matchup that really intrigues you that that gives you a little extra motivation in training? Is there like a skill set maybe you haven't encountered that he has that's a little unique that you're looking forward to and you know going toe to toe with, or it feels like any other camp? It's any other fight, man. I don't care, man. It, it don't make a difference, man. I'm I'm, I'm going in there to I'm going in there to to do what I do best, man. Bantamweight has become a straight up shark tank. You know, you got legends like Aldo, Edgar coming into the division. Cruz is always hanging around, you know, uh, up and coming stars like, not an up and coming star, established stars like Peter Jan, Sterling, Corey Sanhagen making big moves. And even dudes like Simone, you know, Katona, O'Malley are really good. They're not even ranked. You know, it will take some time to get through the log jam into those big fights and title fights down the line for you. You are ahead of schedule for getting into the UFC more so than many other people. What would you be your perfect long-term goal for like big fights and stuff like that are you looking at 2021 22 as the hope for your long-term plans this year and this year is all about establishing yourself in the division getting a ranking stuff like that i can care less man <laughs> send the paperwork that's all that really come down to Send the paperwork, man. I'm, I'm not. I'm not gonna sit up here and say, "Oh, in 2021, I'll be this." Or mm. send the paperwork, man. And we'll find out. I'm speaking of sending the paperwork. How many papers would you like to get this year? You know, a lot of fighters like to stay active. Are you the kind of guy you want to fight at least three, four, maybe five times this year? It's whatever, man. Well, <laughs> whatever they send, mm. I'm signing and sending back. <laughs> what they come down to? Yeah. Uh, from from what I can tell, you are not you know, a big social media guy. Moreover, we, we talked about, you know, you know, not big, big into interviews and the media stuff. You know, the UFC continues to head in a direction of over the top fight promotion and social media beefs and fight booking through social media. How do you like navigate that side of the sport? If you are not too much into that stuff, do you feel like you have to be begrudgingly into doing that kind of stuff and the social media stuff? Because it's, you know, it could be beneficial for say building your brand and building your brand helps your pocket. It helps your bank account. Or do you, hope to kind of just always be yourself like you said earlier and just kind of just leave that stuff up to your management team stay the course and always be the guy you are far away from what has become the popular stuff in the UFC that stuff is all fake man <laughs> you know, that's the thing to be, man. Mm. I'm I'm from the north side of Milwaukee man. when it's a problem you know it's a problem mm. like, people ain't talking about nothing there's gonna be action there ain't gonna be nobody talking to they gonna show you so I don't, I don't, I'm believing that, man. I don't, I don't fall into that, man. And I don't perpetuate that that type of stuff or, you know, recycle crime, man. I got, I seen enough of that, man. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm tired of that shit, man. I'm, I can care less, man. The shit ain't. Me. Now, last question. We, you know, we've talked too much about things you don't like to do, but let's talk about things you like to do. I always like to ask the people that I interview things they like to do away from fighting? Because I understand this is a grind. It's a grind physically. It's a grind mentally at camp going into the fight. What are some of the things you like to do that just have nothing, nothing to do with fighting that you like to do to relax, deflate? You know, I've got people tell me they like motorcycle riding, you know, nature walks, cooking, all kinds of video games, comic books. What is what is Quick like to do when he's not doing anything that has to do with fighting? Anything exciting, man. You know, I'm, 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 I'm really into the thrills, man. Really, it's the thrills, action, and adventure. Right, right, right. Anything, anything other, anything. It could, it could be outside. It could, it could be outside. It could be riding bikes. It could be motocross. It could be go karting. It could be anything, man. You know, I'm a, I'm a competitive guy, and you know, and it really comes down to, I try anything twice, like literally. And if I lose once, I won't lose again. Mm. Is there like? Certain things that you know, thrill seeking. That what's like the the three best things you've done so far? That's thrill seeking stuff. I don't know, maybe skydiving, whatever, something like that. And what's three things that like crazy things you hope to eventually do? Maybe it is skydiving. Oh man, I I already went skydiving. 
<laughs> what some of the other things as good that 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 as through you know as fun and wild as as skydiving that you've done that you've loved. <laughs> uh, one 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 of them is uh you know, just uh, I I'm, I'm not gonna say that one. <laughs> 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 Riding, riding motorcycles, okay. riding, uh, riding some of my motorbikes, some dirt bikes, uh, that type of stuff. And then just, you know, just, I don't know, anything new, man, anything new in the cycle. I never did, you know, like, never know till you try type of stuff. So it'd be whatever, man. Are we, are we going to have to worry about seeing you in the news doing some cliff diving or some crazy shit like that? I don't know, man. Maybe, <laughs> maybe man, you know. When you know, like like when when you work so hard and you train so hard, man, you you gotta play even harder just just to balance it. Mm-hmm. So, um, man, wherever the wind blows, man, 